Welcome to another episode of Daisy and G Spill the Tea. Hi guys and welcome back to another episode of Daisy and G Spill the Tea. Uh, today we're joined by a very exciting guest and we'd like to introduce to you Anita. Hi. Thanks so Thank much you for coming down and being with us today. Thank you for having me. Just move my cake nearer. Yeah, we've got a birthday day in the office and yeah. birthday day Yummy means cake. cake. <laughs> so, obviously. Here we all are. Yeah, so Anita is, I think you've been with us maybe just under a year, would you say? I joined end of January this year. End of, yeah. Wow. So, so, yeah. So, yeah, just, just under a just year. Just under a year. Yeah, and I'd say you've done pretty well in that time. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. Oh, you're welcome. Oh. <laughs> obviously, um, you know, those viewers won't actually know, but you're relatively new to the industry. So what were you doing before and what made you decide to give this side of things a go? So, um, just a bit of background. I've always wanted to do bot modelling, so mm-hmm. that's kind of been a passion I've had from my early teens, but it was put on the back burner. Yeah, because I feel like people think that modelling, dancing, singing, they're mm, all yeah. like far-fetched, dreamlike careers, yeah. and that it's kind of like, no, that's not a, a, a sensible career as such, if that's even yeah. a thing, do you know what I mean? So people think, oh no, I can't possibly do that but so what mm-hmm. did you go on to do so i um i was working as a civil servant up oh, until wow. 2017 wow. my sister was and a civil servant as well actually yeah. yeah until recently oh okay she left i think in like 2020 or something like that but yeah. okay that's small so wow. <laughs> i had this passion put on the back burner in between i think i did try to you know register with agencies but nothing worked and in 2017 gave up the job and took on uh, TV and background work so yeah. I became a support artist and then over the last three years I've managed to get small modeling jobs mm-hmm. which I built on sort of gradually and then you know started to sign up with you know modeling agencies Mm -hmm. which is where the last I would say since summer of last year has really helped and helped me to secure better jobs so Mm -hmm. last summer I did number seven the number seven campaign yeah Yeah. and since um yeah things have just snowballed yeah amazing yeah so what so what advice would you give to someone who is new to the industry and looking to break into the industry what would you say is your Anita's tips and tricks my (laughs) tips and tricks I would say um definitely build on a portfolio get some really good images I think Mm. that's key yeah because your images are what sells yeah and that's like your marketing material that's definitely and um I think um be consistent in what you're doing so it's all well and good getting a professional photographer and getting some images and then perhaps signing up with an agency and and then think that oh that's I've done my bit mm, yeah. and things are just going to develop Full it doesn't sort of thing it's yeah. something you have to constantly work at and yeah. I've I, I must admit proof of that aren't you? I like have persistence. I have been <laughs> on it this year like anything I work at it and I'm constantly trying to see what I can do um I every three months I update my pictures yeah that's I, what we like to hear as yeah. well. <laughs> to be fair you are a dream I feel like if I'm sending you an email with a self-tape you're back in like two minutes being like yeah, yeah getting this done for you Daisy yeah, like, like sorted properly, all yeah, the details, yeah. Like, yeah I just feel like I know you guys you, you've got your job to do and I the one thing I dislike is having anyone wait on me mm. And I think, you know, it, it's it's so important to kind of communicate mm. well and, and be quick with your emails because you're waiting on me to yeah. respond. I Unless I'm on a job. So I've got yeah, some of emails. That's, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, I've got some emails come through where I then get the text and I'm like, I'm just doing yeah. something now. I will respond as soon as I can. Yeah. But I, I think the difficult thing with the commercial industry is that it is so competitive so, and it's so the fast paced. It's, so, yeah, it's yes. like and so unfortunately, like it's not always the case. Obviously, clients always have their favourites, and if they're willing to wait, then that's great. But unfortunately, not all clients are willing yeah. to wait. Exactly. And I also do yeah. think sometimes a lot. Like I've had it a couple of times with clients where they'll request the same person few, 
through a few agencies mm. and I think it's yeah. the first person to get back to them it's like yeah cool right. that's kind of going yeah. through you sort of thing Strike one they haven't got time to be waiting on yeah on it is very like, very it's no. very quick isn't yeah. it and they want it and they want it now and understandably because sometimes mm. it's very tight deadlines yeah. isn't it mm. I mean we're grateful if we're working on a shoot that's like one two three weeks in advance yeah we're like what? generally <laughs> you're shooting like, when yeah, yeah I'm not even bothered about that yeah, like, but we like, leave that till the day before like, that's a yeah. that's like a blessing isn't really? it really yeah oh gosh yeah. But, yeah but that's you know that's just how it is isn't it and you, yeah. just, you learn the to the industry to that way to, yeah you yeah. adapt to that way because you, you can't sort of whinge or moan about and say oh we need time it's just how the industry is and it's kind of um adapting to that and and communicating well and I I find that you know for for someone that wants to break into the industry you know that those things you have to have those qualities it's not Mm -hmm. just about being pretty or getting some lovely images Mm -hmm. and then saying oh okay well I'm not getting any work you've got to work at it Mm -hmm. you've got to constantly work and okay, yes, I'm, I may have got a couple of good jobs, mm. but it doesn't end there. Yeah. I've got to continue building on yeah. that, and you got to want. You more. definitely, yeah. it's definitely one yeah. of the things that if you put into it, you get out of it, it don't you? Absolutely. And I've I've noticed this year, and what, and obviously social media being, you know, putting mm. things on social media that That's that what I was helps. Say, you are good at that, aren't you? I you know? yeah. <laughs> Do I you mean, enjoy I, it? I enjoy it. Yeah. I think that's the key. It's like I'm. A creative person so I bring that out in in yeah. my on my page yeah and I'm sure people get fed up seeing my pictures <laughs> no, never, I, never, I, never I just think well this is my business yeah. it's yeah. for well, my sometimes work we you know we love seeing stuff like that because actually a lot of the time obviously we're not on set with you mm-hmm. and sometimes we don't see those photos for weeks months yes. sometimes even yeah. years yeah. after the shoot has happened so sure. if we're not seeing your lovely behind the scenes reels or a sneaky yeah. uh, selfie here and there then we have no you idea. idea and sometimes yeah. we are a bit nosy and sometimes we do want to know if yeah. we're working on a job for we want to know <laughs> Yeah. I love when it's on like yeah. set. I want to know what you're eating. I want to know yeah. who you're there with. Yeah, I want to know what it all looks dinner. like. Yeah, like yeah. tell me everything. And it's, it's just nice, and I love leaving feedback uh, after I've done a shoot because yeah. it's just also. Oh, I love you for that. Yeah, because I, I literally, once I've finished on my journey home, I just love to just come back and say, look this was so good, this was amazing, and, yeah. and, you know, they always are, you just, I just get a buzz from it, yeah. I mean, the Primark one, I swear, I didn't sleep that night, <laughs> I was oh. still buzzing, because it was I just, I mean, what an, it's an amazing name to work for, even if you've yeah. been in the industry a while, but relatively new to the industry, like yeah. yourself, Primark obviously is one of those big, it's, up, I think, um, it, yeah, it's big, companies. like, how many Primarks are there in London? Like, exactly. if you just think about that, yeah, so then yeah. just think about that on a bigger st- scale, like, well, how many Primarks yeah. are there in the UK, and then just, that's mad, like, that's, that's an amazing yeah. campaign, yeah. I think. And it was yeah. such a, it was such a, a lovely campaign to work on, so do you want to talk to us a bit about that, obviously, yes. I know what this about, but. <laughs> Yeah, no, absolutely, it's, it's just crazy, because... The timing of it all happening was, you know, when you sent me that email, Mm -hmm. it was just a couple of weeks before I got diagnosed with my doctor because I've been, I've had a really crappy year this year with all the symptoms Mm. and I got that email and it was almost like, obviously I'd I'd been told, yeah, I'd been told I'm going through, I'm perimenopausal. So the email came through and I, it was almost like I said to myself, that that job's mine yeah it has to be how has this happened that is me. it was crazy yeah, yeah. so looking for perimenopausal and menopausal, menopausal. women like or a bit particularly like diverse um cast anyone and everyone but right. someone who's willing to talk about their story yes so yeah, yeah. obviously i did take availability of quite a few people you know i had quite a few people cast for that and that's for me alone so right for you to then book it I know. It was incredible yeah and we were uh, I mean me as a booker I'm so chuffed yeah, to be like I work with Primark yeah. but you also work with Primark yes so it's, yeah because I remember when the self-tape request come through I had a job and I literally come in in the evening threw my bag on the floor and was like <laughs> I've got to do this tape oh. and it was like I didn't have to prepare I didn't have to think about it I just came got, natural it just come naturally like mm. I was brutally honest I thought there's nothing for me to sort of exaggerate or make up I just 
I struggled a lot this year. And as a result of doing that campaign and meeting Kathy from the shoot, the, she wasn't a model, she'd come through Instagram. Oh, okay. So yeah. she runs a HRT page. And just by talking to her, it's made me... So alone and like, you're like, there's other yeah, women in the same yeah, boat? Yeah, there's that, but also just to kind of seek, you know, the right uh, advice from doctors, you know, go yeah. to the doctors and I'm on HRT and it's yeah. it's helped, it's still early days, but it's it's like I, I was so adamant, I wouldn't take any treatment, I wanted yeah. it all natural, but I knew I wouldn't... I wouldn't be coping, you know, with all the symptoms that I've gone through. I still have them, but it's yeah. it's getting it's better. Helping. It's helping. Yeah. And that being on that campaign and meeting these women and, you know, going to the event and just just talking about it. And there's just so much out there now. And I think it's amazing to be mm. part of that. So I I shop in Primark every week. And I've always gone in there and looked at the boards and thought... I would one day love to do this and when this job availability came through it was like oh my gosh obviously the topic behind it meant a lot to me because I was going through it but also for the brand Primark so it was like a win-win situation and when I submitted that tape it was like I was until I got that confirmation was like oh my gosh refreshing now refreshing now (laughs) and um I was just so over the moon. I mean, uh, even till I'd done the job, it was like, did I actually do that? Did yeah. I do that shoot for Primark? And it's also not just been one, though, has it? You know, it's been, it's turning into I a little know. bit of a repeat booking, yes. which is lovely. And, and then to call you, me back. So, yeah. yeah, that was... And then you went to the event alongside recently. Was it Lisa, Lisa, Lisa Snowden, Snowden yeah. was there? Was so talk to us about the event then as well. So that was the launch party, that was the launch party for party. the menopausal the range, range, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yes, that was... Um, it was Lisa Snowden who hosted it, and there was uh, lots of... Um, there was about 30 women some of them were doctors you know menopause doctors and the um, marketing people from Primark there was a lot of people from Primark and it was just a really good um, event day where we got to sort of share our experiences of what we are going through or gone through and just yeah having you know the doctor there was Dr Naomi Potter who was there and getting advice from her what we could do and just just being able to share our experiences with one another yeah because everyone has a different experience yeah. I was just really you know really good day and, and I guess like in that situation like no question is too silly and like yeah. you know so it's very like yeah. open room in that and I guess everyone that you're there with is going through a very similar thing so it's kind of like you're all going to relate on a level no matter how different your experiences are it's all going to tie you together with that one thing yes and the the other lady that did the shoot with me um Bianca her she had a different experience so she was a uh, cancer um victim so she had a different experience the other two ladies unfortunately couldn't be there but just to share you know what what happens to you to your body at you know certain ages you know we all have it at different times you know we can mm-hmm. it can start as early as thir- in your 30s and which is crazy um, isn't it? yeah and and just just mm-hmm. being able to talk about it and have the topic out there that i think everyone regardless you know if you're a bloke blokes should know about it mm. You know, you, our mums obviously are like my mum's generation, and especially coming from an Asian background, mm. it's a it's like a, a huge taboo topic. It's yeah. a very much taboo yeah. topic, yeah. even even surrounding periods. It's mm-hmm. like we don't talk about those no, things. Yeah, everyone so, knows it goes on, but no one talks no about one talks it. about it. So the menopause thing is like no one like I can't speak to anybody about it. Like I can speak to my mum, but her her approach or like my cousins would be, well it's just all part of a woman's journey you just get mm-hmm. on with it mm. and that that's how it is and it's mm. like you feel you feel alone with it and you yeah. think you know who can you actually talk to and and have someone actually understand what you're going through mm. and it, it's just I, I'm just so shocked how from from doing this campaign that 
there's nothing out there for people for for women to to you know seek help and advice mm-hmm. you know doctors aren't trained in this area really believe it or not oh, i feel like this is a, like a a thing that's coming to light recently with like loads of things where like you said like a lot of things we've been brought up to not talk about to not Mm. discuss if I'm going through something it's a bit like oh like can I speak on this or whatever I think in the day and age they're at now it's quite nice that these conversations are having and they're more more open and Mm. people are actually more willing to understand to listen to and even I guess like learn from it and kind of work on it and I think it's paving the way thankfully for the younger generations who have these more open conversations about these things because I don't know about you but I didn't really know about menopause or anything like that until I got older and it was something that was in my household it's something they like suddenly brushed on in science but it wasn't really like a thing that you delved into or like like your your mums I expect yeah have gone through it Yeah, yeah yeah but you probably didn't really know what was what going it was on, yeah then. which you'd because think when we're in school surely that's just like black and white something that we should know it. about we know yeah. about yeah. periods we know about everything else why aren't we being why told we about told this as well, well no. mm. yeah it was a very eye-opening uh campaign for me as well that's for sure but yeah i'm really glad to have got you booked mm. on that so yeah another yes. one ticked. definitely yeah. definitely so when you obviously first delved into the industry um if you said you applied for a, a number of agencies but what attracted you to applying to us <laughs> you guys were always um top of my list and i think i did try for a long time and i know where i was failing because my pictures you know i didn't realize that you know i i mean pictures that i've taken on my phone mm. or selfies i mean i i think perhaps you know last year i knew that I need to invest in a in a photographer, mm-hmm. professional photographer, and get some decent pictures, and that that did the trick. Yeah, that was where I I failed. So, um, you guys were being yeah my top agency to you know I was like I need to get on Sandra Reynolds mm-hmm. books, and I think I've worked with, with models where they have recommended you guys oh, yeah. over the over the last year, and you know I've done my own research as well. So. Um, yeah, I eventually, yeah, I managed to cracked it, cracked it, and it was like so excited when I got um, the emails from Amy, and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to meet them, and then I'm actually going to meet them, and then I was worried, like, oh, then, like, obviously, I come in for the you know audition, and it's like, am I going to be accepted, or and yeah, it's it's been an amazing, amazing year with everything going on internally yes but I've I'm just really excited I think you guys you know are are great as an agency you communicate so well how you you know you operate and how you know you send your details through just just a great way and I I love that I think communication is key for sure and I think you, you guys nail it all the time like I don't have to wait on you guys and you know find yeah. out what's what's happening or I think everything's very detailed in like your emails mirrored yeah. there communication Absolutely. is key for us when we take on talent as well you know you could be you could be Kate Moss the most beautiful yes. woman yeah um but unfortunately if we can't get hold of you or it's like getting if you're stone, sending us one word emails yeah, with, no. and not with the self tape or the yeah, images just that we need. And unfortunately, available. it's not going to be a very good working relationship. Well, no, of course. <laughs> but I think it's one of those things you, like we said earlier, what you put into it, you get out. Of yeah, it, yeah it? And I think, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're always very on it. And I know if I'm sending you a self tape request, I don't need to worry about that. I don't need to chase yeah. you at all. You're there, being like, yes, Daisy, I'm doing this. Bish bash bosh. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, what are five brands that you want to work with going forward? Have you got your eye on anything? I know, obviously, you've done, like, Sainsbury's. You've done Primark that we've touched on. Lizelle as well, Lizelle I think. Was, yeah, um, what guys. else do you want to kind of get your teeth into? Um, my honest answer to that is I'm open to any brands. I, I think every opportunity is... It helps me in my journey for me to grow as, a, as an artist. So I don't have a particular brand at all I think you know whatever opportunities come through I'm happy to accept that yeah. and and do my best with it I think I can't 
I, I can't say, you know, I, I want to go off and do some super brand. Like, that's, mm-hmm. you know, I, I like even like high street brand. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the opportunity that I value more. Mm-hmm. Amazing. Aww. That's such a lovely answer. That is answer. a really lovely answer, yeah. <laughs> yes, Anita. <Yay! laughs> also, I feel like you've worked with such amazing brands anyway. Like, it's just the only way... Anything else is a bonus. Yeah, for sure. I think, yeah, the only way is up. Is that what you were going to say? Yes, yeah, that is right. The only way is up. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, guys. I think, yeah, I think it's it's, uh, the last, yeah, 12 12 months or so. It's it's just, if I can take, uh, how I see it, any, any opportunity that comes through, if I'm taking baby steps forward then I ha- I'm happy. Mm-hmm. Yes. If I'm stagnant, that's where there's a problem. Yeah. And that's where I don't want to be. But I can see that I am growing and I'm working at it. And with agencies like yourself, you're, you can see how I work. And, yeah. and where to market you best. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so, because at the end of the day, it's, it's like I just said, it's a working relationship. It's a two-way street. You know, As much as we think that you've got a lovely look and one that our clients will like, we need to then be able to follow through with that and be yeah. like, right, yes. this client, this is Anita, like, she'd be great for you and then be able to follow through to the point of option and then hopefully on right. the yeah. But for, for us, as long as we're getting you under the nose of those clients, yeah. that's our job done. Obviously, ultimately, a confirmation out of it is yes. quite yes. lovely. Yeah. Yeah. But I think if you're getting the around. availability checks, the self-tapes, whatever, then you know that it's going in the right direction yes. and we're I, doing what we're supposed to be doing. Of course. I think getting a self-tape request for me kind of confirms I'm... I'm sort of halfway there, really. Yeah, you're on well, the radar I'm, for sure. I'm halfway there to or to get to the end or secure that job. So I think it's always I, I'm always excited when I get a request for a self tape. That's a really good sign for me. It's when when I don't get that, then that's a worry. Like mm. by just seeing pictures, you mm-hmm. know, they they're not going to see what I can do behind the camera. So and sometimes yeah. that's a shame for us if we know that mm-hmm. someone's particularly good for a brief. But you know how competitive the commercial industry is. Mm-hmm. Sometimes clients just literally take it quite literally on face value, and they're they like, do. Yeah. "No, no, no." But just off like yeah, rollers, yeah. And it, it can be really difficult, but we'll get there in the end. And what's yeah. meant for you will be, of course. Always. <laughs> what's meant for you will find a way. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anita, for coming down Thank and talking you. with us today. It's been an absolute pleasure and I think you've just shed light on things that are just that we need to talk about so yeah. thank you oh Absolutely. thank you guys for having me it's You're been welcome. wonderful to be here and be part of this podcast yes absolutely <laughs> well be sure to stay tuned for our next episode yeah. well, thanks guys bye